for another 50 ages, nothing of particular interest happened to our people. I had completed my work on the newest wave city, which was named Adjudication, after the human ship we encountered those ages past. We regularly engaged with the Duke's Lee and the other races on the Great Council, trading the resources of our control systems for knowledge and what few things we needed to prosper. During this time, however, the Duke's Lee grew increasingly distracted. No longer were their leaders able to answer the communications of the peaceful races as rapidly as previous. Only our own diplomat, Halagar, seemed always available. After another ten ages, Halagar brought us grim news. An aggressive and expansionist race known as Vivhag had been growing increasingly problematic. What started off as simple skirmishes and piracy has grown into an all-out war on nearly any race they encountered, and the Duke's Lee were almost completely absorbed into holding them back from the regions of space the Great Council held. He warned us that a sizable portion of their forces were heading in our direction, and that the Duke's Lee would do all they could to protect us, but that we needed to prepare for war. We were apparently in the way of a much greater prize the Thief Hag sought, the dense populations of a sentient hive race only 300 light years away from our systems. To our people, war had always been a hypothetical concept. We had never fought amongst ourselves, and never had another race attempt to attack us. The Juice Lee knew this and began sending us weapons, battleships, and information on strategy and methods of training our people to fight. We redirected almost all of our resources to preparing for this new threat, but this concept was so foreign to us, we had difficulties adapting. Then we had received word that the Viv Hag had arrived less than 400 light years from our territory. The Duke's Lee fleets were holding them at bay for now. We studied the Duke's Lee's methods of war, then the reports from battles with the Vifhag, then the methods of the Greek Hash, and finally, the methods used by the humans. The human method was the most confusing for us, not only due to the general lack of information available, but as much to the seemingly suicidal nature of their engagements. There were reports of a single group of seven humans abandoning a nearly destroyed battleship in the Corgan War, but instead of fleeing, they boarded the enemy ship and crippled it to the point of it being brought out of battle. That ship was said to house nearly 800 Corgan. Our leaders received word from Halagar, one age later, that the Vif Hag had broken through the defences of the Druk's Lee, and they would be in our furthest colonised systems within a few months. There was good news, however. It was made apparent that the Duke's Lee had been negotiating on our behalf with the humans for aid. They secured through trade, Three light Imperial battle cruisers, as well as billions of weapons, ground vehicles, and small attack aircraft for inside an atmosphere or in space. They had told us that humans would make a ship entirely out of guns if they could. They would just keep adding guns until you would need to make the ship bigger to add more, and then build a bigger ship. We saw what they meant by this the moment the trade convoy arrived. The great battleships had enough ammunition and power reserves to wipe out an entire Duke's Lee battle group and shield technology not even the Duke's Lee fully understood. There was cloaking technology, which made them near impossible to detect unless you were within 100,000 kilometers of them. They had millions of antimatter missiles for thousands of missile bays all over the ship, thousands of laser cannons capable of aiming in any direction, seven massive plasma launchers on the front capable of launching what can only be compared to small suns on the front, and another three on each side, thousands of small assault craft in hangar bays, and three 12 km long, half km wide rail guns, exiting at the front of the ship with several normal spikes and two antimatter tip projectiles each. There were also hundreds of thousands of what we could only figure were escape pods, but there were actual labelled escape pods. The Duke's Lee told us to not touch those ones. The infantry weapons were adapted to our physiological needs, and the heaviest turned a two-ton, eight-meter-thick piece of the strongest titanium alloy we had into dust in seven minutes. The ground vehicles were similarly adapted to our physiology, as well as amphibious, and I am positive a single heavy tank, as the humans called it, would destroy multiple wave cities. The small assault craft would house a single pilot and had an array of hundreds of small two-kiloton nuclear missiles and tens of thousands of depleted uranium bullets, as well as 12 antimatter grain-tipped warheads for attacking large ships in space. The Duke's Lee apologised for the names of the great battleships, saying it was an unconditional requirement of the humans that they be named such. The names were 
riveted for pleasure. It's watertight and hippity hoppity, get off my property. We did not and still do not understand the meaning of these names or why the Jukes Lee apologized. We barely had time to acclimate to our new weapons before the second line of defense was broken and countless fifth hag vessels were in a single jump distance of a territorial border. A mighty fleet of 3,000 battleships of Jukes Lee and Dashai Joint Engineering was deployed, led by the great battleships with the vessel Hippity Hoppity Get Off My Property at the head. When the first fifth hag capital ship entered our system with a fleet of 700 smaller ships, they made towards our uncloaked battleships, straight towards the undetectable great battleships. The moment the capital ship was in range, the Hippity Hoppity Get Off My Property launched the first salvo from its great mighty railguns. Two normal projectiles and a single antimatter projectile. The first destroyed his shield. The second tore through the hull and stuck half out of the ship's rear. The third perfectly entered the hole made by the second, its payload detonating with contact of the second and annihilated the enemy ship. The entire Deshai battlefleet was in awe at the destructive power of the great weaponry of humanity. The fifth hag were undeterred, however, as the rest of their forces were close behind. They made full speed towards our spacecraft, their own small fighters engaging ours. Dozens of Dashai ships were lost, hundreds of thousands of lives removed from existence. The great battleships were all that held the line against the incoming enemy. Taking a note from what we knew of human combat tactics, the It's Watertight charged straight into the center of the largest cluster of Vivhag ships, the great shields ramming into some of the largest enemy ships and crippling many of their power systems with the impact. A barrage from the missile bays and all laser cannons firing in unison destroyed dozens of Vivhag vessels alone, but the concentrated fire from so many ships broke the shields of It's Watertight. A second emergency shield system was discovered to be on the ships, and the pilots ran from the fray. The secondary shield was broken, and half of the ship's sublight thrusters were destroyed in the retreat, forcing its watertight to hold back to protect smaller ships from waves of incoming vivhag while the shields recharged. The commanders of Ribbity for Pleasure decided to utilize the plasma cannons. A single volley was launched from the forward cannons, two of the projectiles overloading the shields of another vivhag capital ship, and the remainder causing enough hull damage to force much of the ship's atmosphere to be vented into the void. This great first battle lasted for weeks. The Vifag were clearly more experienced in warfare than we were, but with our juicy allies and the great might of human weaponry at our disposal, we could hold. In this time, we lost nearly half our ships, however, and the Vifag were cunning. Its watertight, already damaged, became the prime target for the enemy. In the final day of that engagement, the great battleship was destroyed. The enemy was quick to capitalize on this hole in our defenses. Our fleet was forced into retreat, another 300 ships lost in the process. Countless Vifag ships made it past us at that point, many more keeping the bulk of our fleet and the hippity hoppity get off my property occupied. The first of the Vifag vessels had made it to our furthest colonized world at that point. Our anti-space and anti-air weapons firing at full capacity to hold them back but it was not enough. Within two more days, their ground troops had made it to land. The ground war was the most devastating. The human guns and juicy ground troops shredded large portions of the enemy armies, and the tanks and aircraft kept the enemy's own at bay, but within another week that world fell. The Vif Hag and their vile, scaled people consumed Dukes Lee and Dashai corpses and living alike when they hit our lines. The same scenario played out on the rest of the Dashai colonies. One, two, three weeks of holding the enemy back before being overwhelmed and eaten. We had only two of our five systems remaining, our home system and the one furthest from the front lines. The remainder of our fleet and the two great battleships had finally made it back to the home system, in time to hold back incoming hostile forces and defend the home world. Every Dashai capable of holding a weapon was recruited into a militia to defend the ground, and every elder was sent to the ships to aid in the physically undemanding tasks of piloting aircraft and aiming weapons. I, at only 170 ages, was deployed as well to the homeworld in command of a platoon of Deshai, protecting what we thought to be the enemy's most likely landing point. Halagai himself and his personal host were there with us, and their presence gave us much comfort. As the great battleships and what little remained of our original fleet held off the enemy in space, Juice Lee reinforcements arrived to bolster the defence. 
This proved to be all that held them off long enough for the greatest day to come. Halagar ran to me and told me a significant development has occurred in one of the many light years distant engagements with the Vivhag. He gave me a datapad with a single line of text. This is Captain General Flagstaff of the LGV Stoke Adjudication. We are now involved in this conflict. Hold the line.